Someone's making noise. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Diamond from the Oppenheimer Ranch Project bringing you a special update. We are talking about the 34th annual Crestone Energy Fair, one of the most important alternative energy fairs on Earth, maybe in, even in the entire galaxy. We'll have to ask uh, Zorg's opinion later. But joining us tonight is the famous Zorg from the planet Nanu Nanu. Uh, Crestone Energy Fair producer, Nick Navaras. Tell me if I'm correct there. And the one and only Brett and Lisa. Lisa has been the backbone of the Crestone Energy Fair since I've been coming. And these people are good people. They're bringing to you one of the most cutting edge free events in all of history. Uh, and I'm sure this year will be uh, unlike none other, because of the whole woo flu and the COVID scare, we had a little lull there. We had to move the event. It's now back in downtown Crestone, and it is typically composed of dozens of the most amazing speakers on multivariate topics from permaculture to natural building to sustainability to local food sovereignty. And then there's bands and there's vendors and there's food and there's community and sometimes a dog bites somebody. But all in all, it's a fun time. And this year, like none other, there's going to be some unique things. We got home tours. We got finished houses, houses being built. We also, I just heard or just saw on the interwebs that there is a permanent natural building in installation happening right now. So welcome to the show, guys. And tell me about what's going on in town to prep for the event. Sure. Thanks, Diamond. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Lisa, you want to go ahead? Sure. I'll defer to Brett because Brett's actually been That's out there fine. with Sean on this build. But yeah, we're doing a permanent structure because we're tired of tearing down every year. And that was a lot of the intention before. So yeah, in years past, we just had a small, you know, two foot by two foot sample piece. And this is going to be uh, a shed and it's going to be a uh, housing for the energy fair to, to, give, to give a little background on this real quick so uh, every year we have a building demonstration as part of the event where we uh, demonstrate you know different natural building products like hempcrete and straw bale and things like that and every year like brett said you know we have to um tear down we you know we'll do the demonstration but then usually we have to tear it down just because there's it doesn't really amount to much um, and yeah. we end up wasting the materials. So this year, you know, the guy who is um, spearheading this, uh, Sean King, uh, is working with Brett to create a permanent installation that is, you know, we'll start with a frame and then infill in different sections, different building materials that will allow us to showcase those different technologies. So, so it's not going to be uh, like a, your normal structure, like an earthship or whatever. It's going to be a, a shed that has cob over here, right? And sandbags here and tire pounding here. So we can see all the different facets of natural building. That's correct? Correct. Yeah. Schedule too, yeah. So on it. the front, there's five different systems. You know, we have, a, we have a cob wall. We've got natural stone, dry stack. We've got aircrete, we've got a hempcrete, and then we have a tire wall on the backside. So there's five different ones across the front as well that will be visible from the inside so we can, you know, test it down the road to see how energy efficient it is. And it's just going to be a really cool demonstration that people can see for years to come. Yeah, I, I like the idea of longevity for a couple of reasons. And plus, it can become like an outpost where people that come into town doesn't have to be the Crestone Energy Fair. They can come and see all that type of natural building in one spot. So yeah. is it going to it'll be open to the public for like viewing like that? It will be during the energy fair. Afterwards, okay. uh, it, it'll be by appointment. So at the energy fair this year, there's going to be several workshops, specifically ones that I need to go see, like the one cob workshop that has at least three different kinds of cob. I think I read, I have the, uh, these walls, a huge section of walls in my geothermal, uh, my earth tube greenhouse here that I have set up with lath to, to accept the cob. And I just need, I've watched videos, but videos only take you so far. You got to be able to touch it, feel it, squeeze it to know what, what, it, what the good stuff is. And I don't want to do a bad cob and have it crack or fall down. I no. need to know from the people doing it. So yeah, sure. that's one of the benefits of the energy fair. The people here have been doing it. 
Yeah, Sean King is a he's an expert. He's a you know he's more of a research and a scientist by trade. I think, you know, so he spends a lot of time and he will dig into your soils, figure out the right mixture. He's not a contractor. He's just more like he tries to figure out the recipe behind how to do it right, and what will work for your climate. And that's a that's a big problem. Um, as a realtor, I've definitely seen uh, melting houses, <laughs> melting. <laughs> uh. And yet you definitely want to hire someone like Sean who knows what they're doing or at least learn from him uh, to mm -hmm. make sure your walls don't melt. <laughs> and uh, Zorg, let's go to you. You're, you're muted. This will be the first year you've come to the Crestone Energy Fair. I've been going for five years. I've been, I think I've spoke every year or something like that. Uh, we've certainly been vending. People have been asking for your presence there because you do so many podcasts on the interesting things that happen in the San Luis Valley, calculations so on and so forth. And you're even good friends with several of the more popular people in the Crestone community. Yeah, I am super looking forward to it. Uh, having a little bit of a delay with the satellite connection here. So I apologize if it appears that way. But yeah, I've been wanting to go for several years and it seems like the universe has prevented me from going for whatever reason, but the universe is leading me there this year. And I hope to make it a yearly event that I can go to because first of all, I'm fascinated with Crestone and that whole area and the vibe out there and the people have built off grid. Uh, my friend, Christopher O'Brien, which wrote a book called the mysterious Valley, which is geared towards mm -hmm. Crestone. He knew a lot of people out there back in the day and him and his brother were building houses with um, hay and con like they would get hay barrels. I think put concrete over it or something and uh, very efficient, very uh, like strong and sturdy and fire resistant. And the more as we can get off the grid, I think the better. And so this is going to be an awesome event. I'm going to learn as much as I can. And I've got a bunch of gear I'm going to take out there and we've got a bunch of clothes and we're going to give away a ton of stuff out there. So I hope to nice. meet a lot of people. Yeah. I'm really looking forward to this. Awesome. All right, Nick, let's, uh, this is your big opening. Tell us what's going on, what's new and, uh, what to expect. Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, this year we're just refining what we have done and what we've perfected in the past. You know, it's um, like like you said, it's back in town, back in the town of Crestone. Um, we have three general areas that we uh, concentrate on. The first is the main stage that, you know, thankfully this year we have a permanent in, permanently installed stage that we have been working on throughout the summer. And thanks to Brett, it has uh, brand new stairs <laughs> and uh, is going to continue to be uh, worked on and beautified. Um, but we have, you know, we're this year we're bringing it back to the region. You know, in the past we've had talks on, you know, things that are more global. And this year we're really trying to bring back the local element, talking about food sovereignty, things that everyone really needs to think about in their own communities. Um, we're talking, you know, you're talking about how to bring soil back to life, right? Um, on Saturday. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then we're having our, you know, our, um, one of the biggest talks, the most popular talks uh, of the weekend is the natural builders panel that's led by Eric Vicinis, uh, the off-grid guru, who, um, you know, brings in different um, uh, discussions about technologies and the pros and cons of them. You know, like Rex said, uh, straw bale is an awesome product, but, you know, there are ways you need to be, things you need to be aware of when you're dealing with straw bale. Same thing with cob and same thing with hempcrete. You know, I've, I actually have a 900 square foot addition that we built in my house uh, out of hempcrete. And I got to see the pros and cons of that. Um, <laughs> um, but, you know, then we have our, um, you know, this year um, in the street right in front of um, right off of Cottonwood Street, we'll have a, uh, a nice courtyard with uh, food vendors as well as uh, band, local bands that will be performing throughout the uh, both days. You can en enjoy some live music. Um, and then in our Creekside Park, you know, just like last year, we're going to have uh, different healing arts and he different healing modalities, uh, talks about, you know, we'll have Tai Chi available, we'll have Qigong, we'll have uh, contact improv. Um, we actually, I'm really excited. We have a, um, let's see, what's his name? Um, a guy named Brian Besco, who has a company called um, Twisted Sage. They make tensor rings. I don't know if you know what tensor rings are. Um, but they're going to, he's going to be coming and talking about the technology. Sounds dirty. <laughs> <laughs> well, tensor rings are pretty cool, actually. They, um, from Nick. <laughs> huh? Oh, 
Uh, they, you know, tensor rings are pretty cool because they um, they harness the electromagnetic field around us and generate a um, a pulse because of the the length of measurement from, that you are um, uh, creating from. Um, I I don't, can't even begin to pretend like I'm an expert on it. I would just say, you know, you should come and see um, and talk to this guy firsthand. But there's some really amazing speakers this year, and uh, we're we're excited to play host to them. Yeah, thank you, Nick. And Sunday, some amazing speakers, Diamond and Leah, are going to be talking about the very theme of the Crestone Energy Fair, reimagine self-village nature, and we're going to hone it in on sovereignty. And because all of this is about sovereignty here, yep. we need to reimagine the society that we live in because the control mechanism is becoming so severe that people are losing touch with who they are or what they should be. And they're being driven into a dystopian future that doesn't involve nature. It doesn't involve natural healing modalities. It doesn't involve with you growing your own food, pesticide free. They don't want that for you. They want you in the machine. And so we want to bring you out to this event to teach you how you can reimagine your life in a different way. And, and the beauty of the Crestone Energy Fair is that as far as like natural building, you don't have to be your own guinea pig. You don't have to make the mistakes that these people have made. You can come out and learn from the experts on what not to do. Like all the people on my road here that built with straw bale, they didn't realize we get, even though it's the desert, we get too much rain here in the form of snow. And so it sits on the ground. It can build up two or three feet and it'll soak into the straw bale. And the home is ruined in a decade. So you need to have certain amounts of concrete barrier up at least 48 inches on certain walls, et cetera. And so you don't want to learn that through like a $10,000 mistake where you can't live in your house anymore because of black mold. I mean, that's just stupid. So that's why you come out to the Crestone Energy Fair. So you can survive and thrive in the changing times and you can get ahead of everyone else because from what I've seen, all the best at all these modalities are here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's been a testing ground diamond for over 40 years, you know? Um, yeah. So people have figured out how to build, like you said, straw bales. Straw bales are really amazing. You, you know, you can build a house for, you know, forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 and not be in the debt slave system, you know? But you need to know how to use, you know, stucco that's breathable because if you, you know, enclose your straw bales in um, a non-breathable material, then over time they can mold and rot. And so it has to be a, a semi-permeable stru um, exterior structure and interior, ideally. Um, but then it also has to be, um, you know, buttoned up. Like if you get cracks, you need to make sure you seal those so there is no water infiltration going inwards. So there's a lot of just little, you know, minutia in the building world. And obviously, Brett can talk more to that. <laughs> mm -hmm. Hey, Brett. Diamond, I want to bring in just a little aspect with our theme from these last three years you yeah. know we three years ago when the whole covid you know <laughs> pandemic happened we had the choice you know nick and donovan and i of okay what are we going to do because no events happened in our county so we went to private land and we kept it that's where that theme reconnect with self village nature came in and then that next year we went to reclaim because it's like okay we've got to get everybody really still coming together then we've got to reclaim these rights and our sovereignty. So now this year with that reimagine, some of the things that have happened in these last three years, we can talk about all these wonderful building and off grid and all that, but if our codes that they want to impose and if these different regulations come down that the, the, the building questions kind of become, you know, a bigger problem. So one of the things we did with the County was, we really worked with them together to keep the 150 square footage minimum in the state because they were trying to up it to 900 across the board. Um, and, you know, many of you know, I've lived in a tiny home for 10 years and now we're still in under that. And then this year they were really pushing at the state level, the codes, those energy efficiency codes, which once you implement those, you're going to the rest. You can talk yeah. about that. <clears throat> You're, yeah, if you adopt any code, you get the energy efficiency codes. <clears throat> so your building costs can skyrocket from an additional twenty to fifty thousand dollars. And so, as owner builders, we want to just help the the owner builders and the community to, you know, mm -hmm. 
stay here and survive yeah. and keep building the way we're building and not have all these junk codes that come after us. Yeah. So the pocket of freedom that was once Sawatch County is being infiltrated by the woke yeah. masses that want to put yeah. on these green codes where you need this, that, and the third. When the, the beauty of the county was that there were no regulations. It's just you buy like a hundred or $200 building permit and then you build whatever you want in the style that you want. So, and a lot of the community has come out to fight these uh, regulations. I'm correct in that. And is it working? Yeah, we started a mindful land use group out of, yeah, we, the county's really working with us. You know, Nick and Don and I started, we had started another group, Crestone Energy Exchange, so we could get involved in local politics separate from the fair. We wanted to keep that on the side. So we started a mindful land use group really recruited people, Brett, Sean, Goldie with the home tours, a lot of our other builders over the last two years. I mean, it's been pretty nonstop of your county meetings, your planning commission, going to the county commissioners. And it was really our county commissioners who listened and would send things back to the planning commission and say, no, you need to listen to your constituents. And so with different presentations, and then this last final round, we're one of the only counties now who didn't vote in these codes, which are just getting stricter, stricter, stricter. So it's super critical this year and next before they want to try and implement again that we get all our ducks in a row. So with Eric's Builders panel, we're going to really focus on that, trying right. to get the community around that. How do we self-regulate without needing to go to, you know, yeah, the, the whole green push of a lot of just, it just doesn't make sense just to give a little background so um i believe earlier in the year um what we're referring to is that the uh state of colorado mandated that there be that every every county implement building codes and they had a choice whether they could implement them now and it was a earlier version of building codes um or they could wait two years and it potentially implement more strict building codes if they didn't create their own in lieu of those. And the both instances had, like Brett said, had, um, what are they called? Gr like green, um, you know, green features that, for example, um, would require, the more strict ones would require every household to be able to have enough electricity to charge an electric car. Our grid here could never... <laughs> you know, manage that. We, the total grid would collapse here. If every well, caveat, electric cars are the dumbest thing invented. They cost about $10,000 a year to own. They they barely last seven years or 70,000 miles. And you've spent $70,000, which to some people is like two years salary. Mm -hmm. And you have to throw it away. It is well, a, it's the biggest do. scam going. In this Don't forget about the time. It takes 10 hours to power to power up one of those things in full if you go. And even if you have a supercharger, they call it, it takes three hours. But it only costs $8 to charge. So, so convenient. Well, and also, right, so though, convenient. At this, at this altitude and at the temperatures that we get, those those batteries don't no, last don't. long. No. Yeah. No. And then mention the amount of then mention the amount of dirt and the amount of earth they have to move to extract the lithium mm -hmm. to make the battery that lasts about eight, 10 years. Then they and give the them cobalt. to the county after they don't work. The the slave right. labor in Africa for the cobalt. Oh, mm -hmm. so environmentally friendly. I'm woke. It's the best. $8 to charge. Oh my God, All right, man. doom and gloom over. What we're, where we're, what we're dealing with here is the actual group of people that is the change that uh, Rex Bear wants to see. He says it on his show, uh, every podcast for the last decade, and you guys are actually doing the work to get it done. Most people, they work you know, 40-hour weeks. They have kids. They can't get involved in politics. They can't do this kind of stuff. But it turns out if you have a more holistic lifestyle like many of us on the screen where we grow our own food, we have alternative sources of income um, and we're working in different modalities that it is imperative that we prevent these draconian rules being passed because once that happens, it's like our entire reimagining self village in nature disappears. Yep. That's right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I don't want to be sad. I, I want everyone so, to be happy. <laughs> yeah, well, get involved in that effort. We do have a lot of things happening for volunteers and we will feed you for free too. So if you, you volunteer, 
if you volunteer, if you can come yeah, in. Yeah, cool stuff hours. about the Crestone Energy Fair. Yeah. You can always have a free place to stay. If you're a hardcore volunteer, you come in, you work shifts, you get food every shift you work. You yep. can literally do probably two or three shifts a day, right? Yeah, yep, yeah. And you Go eat right all outside, day free. Uh, and if you're that dedicated, you you probably get a spot where someone could point to where you can sleep. Sure. You know, you don't have to buy a, a hotel room or an Airbnb. You could even, I'll, I'll, you could stay in my tent overnight to guard the stuff. You know, that's probably allowed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So yeah, that's a, uh, yeah. stay by their, by their stuff. So they don't uh, feel like they have to abandon it overnight. So that's fine. Um, and you remember, like you said, you know, this is a free event, um, you know, and we, we work hard all year round to make sure this can remain free. So one thing we are always looking for is sponsorship. Even a yeah. small sponsorship, it goes a huge uh, way for us. So if you if you have the means and you, um, especially if you're coming, you know, drop us a line. We'd love to, you know, meet you. And we'd love if you could just give us a little something to help uh, continue to support this um, and remain free. Well, more importantly, uh, Nick, is that you can, if a lot of my fans, I'm sure Rex's fans, want to get out to this event and they can't. They're just too far away. It's not in their schedule. And, and these people own small businesses. If your businesses align with the Crestone Energy Fair, if you're an alternative builder, if you have anything to do with uh, making yourself more sovereign, maybe you're a permaculturalist or you sell classes or something, you can advertise at the event. They hook you up. It's not like standard advertising at most events. It costs you five grand to get a banner. I think for $1,500, you are like one of the top sponsors. You're on in the front stage. You're on the, the website. You're everywhere. So yep. this is a great way to support something that you support that maybe you just can't get out to. So please and look if, into that. And if you can't make it, you know, we are going to live stream again this yeah. year. So you can watch the whole thing. And then that live stream is segmented into the different talks and available on our YouTube, YouTube channel afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it was even re-uploaded last year in high, like 4k, it, mm -hmm. it, like after a few months, it was even better resolution. Yeah, Doug cool. Beach went with Terra Media is pretty awesome with getting all that video and then Tree Fort, uh, Rob Hewitt with Golden Turtle Sound. So those two guys together and with their crews the last three, four years have really upped our game of getting this information out and, and joining our crew. So Yeah, so act now. Now is the time to become a volunteer. Uh, now is the time. There's probably still vendor space available, isn't there? Yep, there is. Yes, yeah, so I've got a few spots. Few spots left. It's few filling spots. up. This, this is going to be the biggest Crestone Energy Fair that I have ever been at. I'm pretty sure. You, you know, you guys. I wanted to say something real quick too. You brought up food sovereignty, and that is so important. Yet most people don't even think about it. They just take for granted being able to go to the grocery store and buying food. And one thing that I've been talking about now for over 10 years, you can go back and look at my blog post from 2011 even, is I said, they're going to put that, they're putting nanotechnology in the foods. Well, folks, you called me a tinfoil hatter and thank you. I appreciate that. That's a compliment, but guess what? There is actually cheese now authentic cheese that has microchips in it. Listen to this. Cheese makers are currently testing a new security system that involves embedding a microchip smaller than a grain of salt into the cheese rind. This microchip acts as an identification card allowing the entire cheese making process to be tracked and also certify the authenticity. So don't take a bite of that. I get it. You're not supposed to eat that part anyway. Don't eat the rind, Rex. <laughs> don't eat the rind, man. Hello. So anyway, yeah, yeah, and a I grain of salt is a little bigger than a food. nanobot, but <laughs> a little nanobot. You will eat Uncle Bill's food. He is injecting. All right, guys, this has been a great first food. promo. <laughs> uh, let's yeah. do some parting words. At first, in our parting words, what's going to be the most awesome part of the Crestone Energy Fair? I'll go first. It's going to be that it's the 34th annual, and I get to continue to go there. I first didn't think I would even be welcome in the town of Crestone based on what I believed and, and, and who I was. And it couldn't be further from the truth. I feel embraced by the community. I, I, I go back there time and time again to the San Luis Valley for the seed exchange. We were just there for 4th of July. Can't mm -hmm. wait for the 34th annual Crestone Energy Fair and see what develops. Rex Bear, you're next. Hey, this is just something that I will absolutely make sure to uh, add some entertainment to the events and i'm looking forward to meeting a lot of people there 
And what an honor to be at this event, right? I mean, to have a chance to meet people like you guys that are actually being the change, that's what I'm talking about. I, like, I'm kind of at a point now in my life where I might actually have to do something else to do League Project, and I'm okay with that because I love what I do. But I was out in public the other day, and I just kind of realized, do I want to go back to the 9 to 5 grind or the 9 to 9 grind actually is what it was and like spend an hour in traffic each way? And then as I'm spending an hour in traffic each way, I'm paying for fuel. I'm paying for like all these ridiculous expenses to get to work. I'm like, dude, I would much rather just do something that I could help people at like at home or around my house or around my own town. Right. But we're in a small town right here and Crestone. Oh my gosh, that town is even smaller. Like if you've never been to Crestone, first of all, it's one of the most beautiful places in the world. It's magical, but it's also difficult to get to. If you've never, I mean, <laughs> you will never go past that place unless you specifically want to go to Crestone or for some weird right. reason, but it is magical out there. And to see people live uh, the way, like the way you all live out there, I think is about as close as you're going to get to, like living with nature, but also having technology at the same time. So let's incorporate mm -hmm. both of those because that's really where it's at. That's what I'm talking about. You guys are kicking butt. So way Beautiful. to go. Beautiful. Thanks, Rex. Thank you. All right, Bodie. Bodie, Brett and Lisa. I'll let you go first. I've been in Indiana for eight months. I can't wait to go. So I've been doing all this work remote most for most of the year, just flying back and forth. So I can't wait to give everybody on our crew a big hug and we're going to do a sweat lodge together Ooh, and like really oh, get in there. So that's the, my thing is a lot of that prep and just really with the crew and how we jive. And cause I've found if you don't have the conflict resolution piece and you don't know how to get along with your neighbors and get through the hard pieces, you know, it, it that's another part. It just, it's really tough to do that. I've seen it split and split. So I'm always trying to like be the mama bear and pull them all back together. So I'm excited for that. I get to like do that to Nick too a lot and be like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> well, and see Brett. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. And for me, it's uh, the natural building panel, obviously, but the free box fashion show. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Totally. No, that was a, that was a highlight from last year. <laughs> and we have special prizes. We have runway models, modeling the latest fashions of the of the free box with the free box. So, well, so then there was an entire free box art installation, which was like yeah. through the woods. Yeah, yeah, and Chris and Allison will be back with that about like reimagining the commons. Like, how do we share space together? How do we utilize the objects and the things in our homes? So. They're just both amazing artists, very talented, and really know how to weave the community and those like undercurrents together. So that'd be a good one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as always, Oppenheimer Ranch Project will be there giving away uh, ounces and ounces of free plant medicine. Nick, final words. Thank you. Uh, I'm looking forward to a panel we're having on Sunday called Dreamers of the Future panel. Mm -hmm. It's going to mm -hmm. be uh, two amazing uh, board members, uh, Goldie and Lydia. Uh, talking about future ideas for a more ideal community. And, you know, I think that's what we really need to continue uh, envisioning is what will make things better. You know, we can't ever be, um, you know, content with what we have as far as growth. We always have to be future forecasting on how we can make this a better world. So I'm looking forward to that panel. Yeah, and based on the way it's been going, I can see a future where the community works together to grow most of its own food, create its own animal products, perhaps, and then, you know, mm -hmm. crowdfunds like all the breakdown of all those products. And at the same time, that continuing education where the community is creating its own university to teach others the skills they need to do the things that other people are already doing. It's not a place where you get overcharged or indoctrinated. It's a place where each and every one is bringing each other up in a way that, that makes abundance for the entire community. Mm -hmm. And that's what the yeah. Crestone that's Energy fun. Fair is all about, bro. <laughs> yep. Halo. Halo. All right, join Halo. us at the 34th annual Crestone Energy Fair, Crestone, Colorado, September 16th and 17th. Volunteer now, become a... Uh, you can get a table, become a vendor. You can just come out and hang out and pimp with all of us and learn how to do stuff that may be important in the future. Guys, it's been a pleasure. We'll do this again as we get closer to the event. And check out the website, which is at crestoneenergyfair.org. That's a boom. 
Thanks, guys. Have a good night. Good night. Good night.